Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It's good to be back. Um, I'm just good to be back. Uh, all right, let's get into today's show. It's going to be a good one. Um, Delonte Tiger Jones, Tiger Johnson, Delonte Tiger Johnson uh, signs with Top Rank. Uh, he'll make his pro debut on November 20th on the uh, Porter Crawford card. Uh, we're going to get into him, break him down, um, go over the news and notes on, on Tiger Johnson. Um, but before we do, please like and subscribe, share on all forms of social media. 3D Boxing comes at you every day, 8, 10 minutes a day to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest boxing news and rumors. Uh, please subscribe to the other channel as well, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Uh, all proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It's very near and dear to our hearts, so please like uh, and subscribe to that channel as well. All right, guys, let's get into today's show. Uh, Tiger Johnson, the Olympian. Uh, spectacular amateur career, obviously, uh, made the Olympic team, uh, made it to the quarterfinals. Um, good fighter, really, really, really fast, athletic, hyper athletic. Um, fought in the Aiba World Championships in 2020. Uh, Omar Juarez says that this is the best fighter he ever fought in the amateurs, the toughest fight he ever had in the amateurs was with Tiger Johnson. Um, he's, he's, he's really good. Uh, you know, obviously deep amateur pedigree. He lost to Ronnie Alley Glacies, who went on a Cuban fighter who went on to win the gold medal <clears throat> in the Olympics. He lost to him, um, in the quarterfinals. Uh, he won two fights. He beat a, uh, Argentine fighter in the opening round. And then he beat a, uh, Kazakh fighter in the second round. And then he lost to the Cuban fighter who, uh, the eventual gold medal winner in the quarterfinals. Um, all right. Um, so, you know, my thoughts on him. I have some notes here. Let's get into Tiger Johnson. Um, he's obviously going to be a good pro. He's going to run his record up. You know, he, he's not going to lose to anyone in the foreseeable future. Uh, you know, top rank will take care of him. He'll build his record. But not, not to insult him, but, you know, they're, kind of, they're here to promote him, right? Um, he's very athletic, very quick, very fast. He's the fastest guy. He's the faster guy in the ring. Okay. Um, he's, he's a welterweight, he's 5'10", he's rangy, long, and to be quick too, he's got a really good jab, his jab right hand is his bread and butter, um, he likes to counter, he's a counter puncher, um, but he's not afraid to come forward, and we'll get into that, he's got excellent feet, he's, he's, he's a master of controlling distance, his footwork is really good, he's never really off balance, like I said, he's athletic, he's high on his feet, he moves really well, and his footwork's good. Um, uh, it's a really good defensive fighter. He's guys, he's hard to hit. He's got those, you know, twitchy reflexes. He can make you miss. Um, and he can judge distance really well. He's a difficult, difficult, difficult guy to hit. Um, but I'm going to, we're going to get into that because he does have some flaws too. Um, he reminds me a little bit of Tanahara from the long range. He's a long range sniper. He's really good in the long range. He can fight in spots on the inside. Um, he's an absolute sniper on the long range, quick, quick, quick. Hands and feet are lightning quick. Um, like he said, he's got good range. So that's where, I mean, he's not a pretty component. He can fight and spots on the inside. But I think he's sloppy. Um, and, and again, he's young, um, you know, just ahead of his pro debut. So he's going to have a lot of, a lot of room for improvement. Um he gets away with it a lot. Like, I mean, just like Tiafimo Lopez isn't fundamentally perfect, but he's so athletic. And Tiafimo is powerful, so he gets away with it, right? Because you don't want to stand in with him. Um, Tiger doesn't seem to be that powerful of a puncher, but he's so athletic. Um, he's so quick that he can get away with things. Um, he also, one thing I noticed is in, in the 2019 IEBA championship, he realized an up jab. Interesting. You know? I don't really know what that means. I just thought it was interesting that he was using it quite a bit. Um, 
in, in the IEBA, in the 2019 IEBA World Championships. Um, interesting. Um, uh, what are the weaknesses? He's got some weaknesses. Um, we got questions about his power. He doesn't really commit to his punches. Maybe, you know, he's got a bit of an amateur style, but he fought in the amateurs as his pro debut. Um, I'd be concerned about his power. That's that's his biggest thing. Um, and he has a tendency to get a little sloppy. He uh, he keeps his when he's in cruise control. When he is really doing his thing, you'll see him drop his hands and he'll have his chin out. Right. A lot of times he'll stay up in the high guard, but when he's get, when he's in control of the fight is when he gets sloppy. Um, again, these are things that aren't going to affect him in the next year or two. But as he moves on, as he progresses, as he moves towards those elite levels and steps up in competition, something to keep an eye on because he can be hit. He he uh, he gets a little little reckless, a little reckless, a little sloppy in those exchanges. Like I said, his chin is out there to be hit. Um, he's gonna have to tuck that. He's gonna have to put that away. And he's got to keep his hands up, um, especially in the exchanges, right? Because there's a long range. He's quicker than you and longer than you. He can get away with that more on the outside. When he is on the inside, he 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 needs to correct that. He needs to fix that. Um, like I said, he 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 likes to counter. Um, he also seems willing to exchange. Um, and again, he's not a big hitter, and he is sloppy on the inside. I'm concerned about him. On a, it's not that he can't fight on the inside. He can. I just don't think he's got the natural abilities to fight on the inside like he does on the outside. He should be an outside fighter, but his skills, his Olympic, he's got good skills. He's, he, he's multifaceted. But I, I don't think at an elite level can he fight on the inside, at least not yet. Um, of what I've seen now, I've watched quite a bit of tape on him. Um, I, I don't think that's his game yet. I think his game now should be sniping from long range, circling, moving, using his natural advantages, which are which is which is his speed. He's a jab right hand guy. He mixes in an uppercut and left hook every once in a while, but it's mostly jab right hand from long range and move. He throws really nice single shots. Like I said, really nice single shots, single right hand. He'll throw a left hook, right jab, jab. He picks those shots nice. But when he does throw combinations, when he does fire them off in, in, in threes and fours, he gets sloppy. His chin is out. He can be countered. He's there to be countered, right? But you're going to have to be quick or you're going to have to have perfect timing. Or you're going to have to have Mikey Garcia, um, Juan Manuel Marquez type timing, or you're going to have to be able to match him for speed. Um, so it's not an easy thing to do, but at those next levels, at the highest level, if – you have those natural abilities or you have that ability to time him, he can be hit. Again, he's going to be a good welterweight. He's going to have a good run. Uh, it's interesting to have Xander Zayas. It's about the same weight class. Um, so, uh, you know, just something to keep an eye on in the future. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, go back and watch a whole bunch of Tiger, Delonte Tiger Jones. Really good fighter. Good speed. I, again, I gave you the pros and the cons, the weaknesses with them. Let me know what you guys think. Um, leave your thoughts, comments below. Please share, uh, like, and subscribe. Also, subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is November 10th, 2021. Um, Ivan Calderon is still in the boxing hall, and let's get the Iron Boy in from Texas to the world. Thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.